Praise the Lord, everybody. We certainly praise and thank the Lord for his goodness and his mercy and his love that he's shown toward us. Amen. Truly, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, there's no telling where we would be. And as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, we certainly want to remember men and women and children everywhere that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good, as the scripture says, to enter his gates with thanksgiving and to enter his courts with praise. Amen. Praise you, the Lord. Certainly is a, a beautiful day outside. Amen. It's the uh, anti-Indian summer. And I don't know why they call it Indian summer. Uh, hopefully it's a derogatory term that some use. <laughs> You don't know the origin of stuff, you shouldn't use stuff like that. <laughs> but we certainly do thank God uh, that his grace and his mercy is with us and, and how he has blessed us to come together. So we want to go before the Lord in prayer. I uh, certainly want to remember all of our bereaved families, all those that are going through in their bodies, both spiritually and mentally and financially. And also to pray for the body of Christ everywhere, uh, that the Lord will continue to strengthen us and give us his grace and his mercy that endures forever. And uh, if there be any other prayer requests, pray for the Bible study for tonight. And if there be any other prayer requests, you can uh, stand down and let it be known. Thank you. All right, we're going to ask the church to stand and let it be hard prayed. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly thank you and praise you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing. We thank you for your grace that you have allowed us to come together one more time. We pray, Lord, that you continue to bless us and help us to encourage our hearts. Bless our Bible study on tonight. Send forth your anointing and word of wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Holy Ghost, speak to us. Open up our understanding that we may receive with meekness the engrafted word of God to the saving of our soul. Father, we thank you, we praise you, give you glory and honor, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 I want you to turn with me tonight uh, to the book of 1 Peter, the book of 1 Peter. And uh, the Lord has laid it on my heart uh, for us to go through uh, 1 Peter and Second Peter. So uh, we're going to do what the Lord said. <laughs> Thank you, Dean. And we have to that first verse there in First Peter, uh, chapter number one and verse one, gives you an indication of who wrote the particular book. And it says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, and Asia, and Bithynia. Beth Beth and what I want to point to you uh, in this particular verse, verse number one, he's using Peter, which was the name that uh, Jesus gave him in reference to him being a rock. Amen, a rock wherein Peter was really charged with, uh, as we would say, opening the doors of the church and laying the foundation. It wasn't until uh, the apostle Paul came around, got converted, wherein his mission was sent to the Gentiles. But Peter's mission was to open up the church, open up the church, uh, specifically uh, uh, those, those Gentiles came in, but specifically uh, with a Jewish intent uh, to open up the church so that the, the doors of the church would be open. And then he preached uh, a dynamic sermon in Acts chapter number two, wherein uh, uh, souls got saved, souls got delivered. And y'all remember, he said, men and brethren, what shall we do? And he said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, uh, amen? And, and people got 
saved and delivered. That was one of the, 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 the reasons uh, why Peter received his name because uh, Jesus had asked him, and this is very important, uh, who do men say that I am? And Peter said that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And Peter, that's why uh, Peter received the keys, if you allow me to say it, to open up the doors. So he's, 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 he's speaking from a standpoint of authority as being one with Jesus, that, that, that was taught by Jesus. So his doctrine, what he's teaching, he hasn't received it of himself, but he received it of the Lord. And, and uh, with, with, with Peter, uh, you have to realize himself, uh, the, the, when, when he was in that, uh, I'll say, uh, they called him at one time, him and the other disciples, ignorant and unlearned. Amen? They called him that. Uh, just, just not that he didn't have wisdom and knowledge, and understanding like the others, but but that you know he didn't have any formal training like the apostle Paul. He didn't sit at under the feet of Gamaliel and was taught by by him. And so they didn't really uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees really didn't look at Peter as being one that 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 uh, had a lot of book knowledge, uh, studying the scriptures. And uh, what I want to get at is that uh, if you see and understand Peter's writings, his writings are one wherein he grows into wisdom, knowledge, and understanding because he's being led by the Spirit of God and the Lord is teaching him. The Holy Ghost is anointed his mind wherein he's opening up revelations and understanding wherein uh, it confounded those that 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 uh, were in or supposed to have been in the know those that had wisdom and knowledge and understanding uh, because Peter was anointed of the Holy Ghost and and was being fed by Christ himself he was able to open up uh, and give wisdom and knowledge and understanding depths in the scriptures uh, that, that, that they were uh, surprised as they were surprised like Jesus. Where did this man get all this wisdom and knowledge and understanding? Amen? So we see here then uh, as our introduction uh, Peter an apostle of Jesus Christ. So he's letting you know that I am an apostle of Jesus, one that was sent forth uh, to, to, to lay foundation, to, to, to open up churches. Uh, now he's writing to the strangers scattered throughout uh, Pontus, Galatia, and Asia, and so forth. Yeah, and that word strangers there, it literally means pilgrims. Pilgrims. Those that are literally sojourners passing through. That's significant to us. Uh, we are pilgrims here on this earth, uh, sojourning, passing through. And, and what, what, what God wouldn't, does not want us to have an specific attachment to this earth, to the worldly things of this earth. He wants us to be in the world, but not of the world. Amen. Strangers, pilgrims. Passing through now, we does that mean we neglect our uh, social responsibilities and legal responsibilities? No, that just means that in our, our mindset is setting our affection on things above, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of the Father. In this day and time, that is so necessary. Why? Because Jesus is soon to come. I know you feel it in your bones as well. <laughs> that, that, that something is about to happen. That Jesus is soon to come. I was reading in the scriptures the other day where it says, if the days are not shortened, it, uh, uh, the very elect uh, <laughs> would be lost. Thank you, Lord. And we ain't going to be lost. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So he said to the strangers scattered throughout, the pilgrims scattered throughout. Now, verse number two uh, is, 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 is Peter is showing forth the depth of his wisdom and his knowledge. And in this particular verse, it, number two, is the whole plan of salvation. The whole plan of salvation is literally tied up in verse number two. Uh, uh, notice what he says. Uh, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto the obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus. Notice, he says, grace uh, un unto you and peace be what? Multiplied. So he's saying elect. That word elect literally means those that are chosen. Those that are chosen. And, and oftentimes, uh, if we make that, that word chosen there too narrow, what, what he's saying is, is that uh, those that are uh, elected by God and God knew them and had a foreknowledge before the foundation of the world. In other words, God had already established a way and a plan of salvation, how, how, how the saints of God should live. Amen? God has established how the saints of God should live. And he did that before the foundation of the world. In other words, God had a plan. Those who accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior are the elect. Those that don't accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior are not the elect. The elect really doesn't mean an individual person. It means those who choose God's plan of salvation. Those who choose God's plan of salvation are his elect. Amen? Because God has a prescribed way for which those that, that, that choose him should live. Jesus said this. Well, Jesus didn't say it. John said it. As many as he came to his own, and his own what? Received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he what? Power to become the sons of God. To as many as you have received Christ. The plan of salvation is to everybody. Yes. Huh? God, God has no respecter of person. It's open to everybody. But he knew that only an elect group, a certain few, are going to choose his way. And if you choose his way, then you have to live in obedience to what he has prescribed. Amen? That's what the elect does. Uh, he, he has chosen us. He has chosen the way you ought to live. In other words, if we were to look at it like this, if, 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 if I were, uh, uh, well, a parent, whatever, and I were to, uh, my, my children are young, I would lay out their clothes for them to wear for that particular day. Uh, I chose what they should wear uh, for them. Amen? And when they put those clothes on, then they have been obedient to what I have chosen. God has chosen a, a way of righteousness for us. Uh, and when we uh, uh, put on his righteousness, then we are obedient to what God has chosen. We become his elect. Amen? Deacon Phil? Our spirit is not conditioned to obey the word of God, as you find out from Adam. It's something in our spirit that bumps up against the word of God. True. And we need our spirit sanctified. True. By the, by, by the Holy Ghost, and that we may obey the True. word of God. Absolutely. That's exactly what he's talking about. 
Because he's saying, elect, I'm explaining the election, because a lot of people really don't understand the election. They think that uh, uh, God chose me because I'm special, <laughs> you know, and, and think that, well, uh, some people are going to be lost uh, uh, because God didn't choose them. That's not, that's not biblical. People are going to be lost because they didn't choose God. Uh, and, and his elect have chosen him, and the election or the foreknowledge is his plan or way of salvation, how you should live, holy living. Those that choose God also choose his plan and his way of holy living. Y'all with me? Thank you, Jesus. I want to make that clear. Amen? Now, notice then, uh, he says, elect according to uh, the what? The foreknowledge. The, the foreknowledge of God, God's forethought. Man, God, God thought about this thing. Uh, if we were to go into the book of uh, Proverbs, uh, we would uh, look at where it says God was prudent. Amen? Uh, and that means that God, God was, was, was really uh, uh, looking at the way of salvation and he, he calculated everything down to the nth degree where it couldn't be calculated anymore. God really planned this thing out. Even your tests and your trials, uh, your life, when you should come into uh, holiness, the times and the, uh, when you should be born and, and when you should be lived, when you should live, and also when you should die. Uh, God, God calculated everything to the, uh, as, as Jesus said, to the hairs on your head, God numbered. Amen? So, so that's God's foreknowledge. He, 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 he had a whole plan of salvation that Jesus would come and give his life as a ransom for you and I, that we would accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and the blood of Jesus would cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and that we should, uh, he, Christ himself, should be Lord, and we should submit ourselves to Christ. Amen? That's hope. That's God's plan of salvation, that he would extend unto you grace and mercy and peace. Amen? Hallelujah. My God. All right? Now, notice what he said. According to the foreknowledge of God the Father, now, here we go. Through sanctification of the Spirit. Now, that's what Deacon Fields was talking about. That, that God would send his, 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 his anointing, the Holy Ghost, to you because we were un, ungenerated. We were, we were unsaved. And, and the Holy Ghost would, 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 would regenerate us, revive us to walk in God's way according to how he has elected the holy uh, people of God to walk. Uh, that, that way is set apart. <laughs> Hallelujah. God has sanctified a way. Uh, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end of that way is what? Death. But, but God has sanctified a way. Jesus, he described himself as being that way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the one whom God has sanctified, uh, that you should follow me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and notice, through sanctification of the Spirit, uh, uh, God's elect have been set apart, uh, not to follow after the devil, but to follow after God, amen, to follow after righteousness, to follow after holiness, amen, whosoever will, what, let him come, amen, whosoever will, let him come, the day you hear my voice, what, harden not your heart, to him that overcometh, uh, I'll give a crown of life, <laughs> hallelujah, if you walk in that way, you should surely overcome, uh, why? Because it's been set apart, set aside, and sanctified by God. God says he knows the way of the righteous, uh, but the way of the who? Shall what? Amen. So he says here, he says, uh, through sanctification of the spirit unto what? Obedience. That's, God expects us to obey him, obey his word. God expects that of us. Amen? Are we in agreement? Amen. Amen. Now notice, he 
says, uh, unto the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus. So, so, so you have the election, you got the foreknowledge of God, you got the sanctification of the Spirit, and now you got the blood of Jesus. I said earlier that in this verse is God's whole plan of salvation. <laughs> I believe you got the blood of Jesus right there. And that blood is there to cleanse you from all of your sins, from all of your filth. Amen. To sanctify you holy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now notice then, he says grace. Uh, we need the grace of God. By grace are you saved through what? Faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And notice, and he says unto uh, and, uh Grace unto you and what? Peace. Peace be multiplied. That peace is, is, is when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you become at peace with God because God is angry with the wicked. Uh, and, and when you accept Jesus as your Lord, God then can extend to you peace. Amen? And in that peace is God's provision. Uh, everything that he desires you to have is yours. Amen? Everything that God wants you to, uh, that you need to be blessed, it's yours. Amen? Because why? That peace deals with provision. God's provision toward you. Uh, he supplies. He gives it to you freely. Uh, hallelujah. Without reservation. He doesn't get upset with you. He doesn't get angry with you. It's what you need in order to walk with him. Uh, uh, hallelujah, my God. So, so that verse there is powerful. It's huge. That's why I said as Peter walked with him, uh, he was able to gain wisdom and knowledge and understanding. I know we talk a lot about Paul and his wisdom and knowledge and understanding, but Peter should be right there with him. Amen? Because he has a lot of wisdom and knowledge and understanding and, and that God has given to him for us. Amen? So we see here. Verse number three. Hallelujah. I was going to say that he also was this. We have to be taught. All right, all right. Speak up there, brother. I said we have to be taught. Uh huh. To deny ungodliness. We have to be taught to deny ungodliness. That's that obedience. And worldly lust. Yes. So we can live soberly and righteous and godly in this world. Yes, absolutely. That's not obedience. Thank you, Jesus. And 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 uh, the Holy Ghost has has sanctified a way for which we are to live. And it and and the Holy Ghost also teaches us that sanctified way. The Holy Ghost reveals to us a sanctified way in, our, in which we ought to live, and the Holy Ghost teaches us that way. That's why we ought to depend on the Holy Ghost more than what we, more than what we do. That's why we ought to listen to the Holy Ghost more than what we do. It's valuable. Huh? Uh, let me say a word. It's invaluable. No price tag. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and we are, because it, it helps us to walk in obedience so that we can live this life. Go with me just over here to, 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 to Romans. Uh, Romans chapter number one. Oh, Lord, have mercy. We haven't said that. In verse, verse number 8, he says, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son without ceasing. I make mention of you always in my prayers. Amen? So, so, so notice, he says, For God is my witness whom I serve what? With my spirit in where? The gospel of what? His son. See, we ought, to, we ought to serve the Lord in spirit. Amen? 
in spirit through the anointing. Huh? Having, having, allowing the Holy Ghost to lead us and guide us into all truth. Amen? Amen. All right? Now notice. Uh, jump down to verse number three. What's it say? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 13. He said, what do you say? Romans 1, 13? Now I would not have you ignorant, uh -huh. brethren, that oftentimes I purposely come unto you, but was left dearer to you, that I might have some fruit among you also. Uh huh. Even as other Gentiles. Read. I am indebted both to the Greek and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. Yeah. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at home also. Now, what Paul is saying, and we're going to go back over here to, to, to Peter. He's saying that because I'm following after the Spirit, now I'm ready through adversity uh, to do what God has called me to do. Amen? When you follow after the Spirit, when you walk in the anointing, you, you can fulfill the mission that God has elected you for. Hallelujah. Y'all catch that later. <laughs> All right, let's go back over to, 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 to Peter. First Peter. Thank you, Jesus. I don't, you know, uh, it's just me. This is me, my mind. I, I wonder uh, how many people really want to know what God has called them to do. And, and once they search it out, you got to search it out. Once they search it out, are they willing to, to do it? I wonder about that. All right, what verse we in? Back on up to 1 Peter, chapter number 1, and now we're in verse number 3. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his abundant mercy, begotten us again unto what? A lively hope by who? Now, he said, God is our Father, and he blessed us. And, and what this is, this is a, a doxology. A doxology is giving God thanks for what he's already done. In the book of uh, uh, Ephesians, uh, Paul gives in the first chapter of uh, many doxologies. He's given a doxology of what God has already done. You should study that uh, on your own when you get some time. But uh, a doxology is literally what God has already done. It's, you can't change it. Uh, it's, it's immutable. Like, like what he said in the book of Hebrews, when I couldn't find nobody else to swear by, uh, that was greater. I swore by myself, uh, saying, Tony Abraham, in blessing, I will bless thee. God, God has blessed those that are his elect, those that choose his way. Uh, and, and like I said earlier, it's not a, 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 a one individual. It's those that choose Christ. Uh, Y'all with me? Those that choose Christ. Those that uh, 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 say, Lord, uh, uh, I'm going to surrender my life unto you. If you say that you're going to surrender your life unto him, then, then, then you have chosen his way. And in that way, God has blessed. Amen? Uh, no, nobody, nobody can deter the blessing of the Lord. Nobody can take that away, that lifestyle, that, that, that power, that, that, that air of deliverance. Amen? So Paul, Peter says, blessed 
be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, notice, have begotten us again unto what? A lively hope. Now, we at one time did not have any hope. We were dead, amen, in our trespasses and sin without Christ and without hope. But, but when you choose God, you choose life, amen, and you, be, you are then connected, reconnected to a lively hope. We all died in Adam, amen, hallelujah, thank you Lord, but we all were made alive in Christ, uh-huh, thank you Jesus. Absolutely. God's foreknowledge. God's plan. Amen? Um, now, 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 if Jesus had to be obedient to the, uh, his part of the plan, how much more uh, are we to be obedient to our part of God's plan? Amen? Thank you, Jesus. We have to walk uh, worthy of the vocation Wherewith we've been what? Called. God, 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 God. Now see, hold on, that's your house. Okay, thank you, Holy Ghost. God, God elected us, but we were called by the gospel. When you heard the gospel, that was God calling you into the election. Huh? And when you received the gospel, you received the election. And the blessings that go along with it. That God had already foreordained. Amen. Hallelujah. This thing is sure. Uh, this thing is sure. What we're in. Hallelujah. That's, that's, that's powerful what I just said. Amen. Because that's what, that's what the gospel does. It calls you into salvation. It, it's, it's God's invitation. Uh, for you to receive Christ. Amen. To, to be a benefactor of Christ's resurrection. Amen. Hallelujah. Because if Christ didn't rise from the dead, we all are still dead in our trespasses and our sins. But he got up uh, uh, on the third day. Uh, and, and what he did for us, he paid the price uh, for your salvation. He paid the price for your deliverance. Not just your deliverance, but for the whole world. Uh, those that would take advantage of it. Hallelujah. If God knew that you would take advantage of it. Hallelujah. If God knew, hallelujah, that you would, you would choose Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Now notice what he said. My God. We in, we in uh, 1 Peter chapter uh, number 1 and verse number 3. He said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his what? Now, God has abundant mercy for us. We need abundant mercy. <laughs> uh, because we're wretched. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, we, we got some issues. Uh, we, we, we want God not to give us what we deserve. Uh, I, I know I do. Uh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Because we deserve to be on that cross. Uh, we deserve to be uh, 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 dead, put to death. Amen. But God extended his mercy to us, to uh, his ability to forgive us. And notice, it's abundant. Hallelujah. Why does it have to be abundant? You should ask yourself. Why? Because we have multitudes of sin. Huh? Am I right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God, God destroyed the earth. Huh? Why? Because the people's hearts were evil continually. Amen? Fully setting them to do evil. Amen? Uh, the Bible says the, the, the mind of a person, of a man, is, is deceitful. Huh? And what? Desperately wicked. Even Jesus said that, that, that from the heart proceeded what? Fornication. Adultery, 
uh, all, all kind of wickedness. You need God's mercy. And God's mercy to us has to be abundant. Uh, for, for us to make it, my God. Um, I hope y'all hear what I'm saying. Uh, um, for, for us to enter in, God has to have abundant mercy for us because uh, when we get saved, we get hard, we, we hard-headed sometimes. Amen? We buck up, don't we? Uh, we lose our way. Uh, and, and God has to have mercy upon us. Uh, an abundant supply. Thank you, Jesus. Now notice, he says, uh, uh, according to his abundant mercy, he begot us again unto what? A lively hope by what? The resurrection of Jesus from the dead. And, and that's where our salvation hinges on. Amen? Like I said earlier, if Christ didn't get up from the grave, we are still dead in our trespasses and sin. But because he got up, uh, hallelujah, we, we have a right to the tree of life. Amen? Because he got up, uh, all power in heaven and in earth was given unto him. Uh, and he, 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 he sat down at the right hand of the Father with an expectation until all his enemies be made his footstool. Because he got up from the grave, uh, not, not, not only because he died, uh, but because he got up from the grave, he, he was transitioned into a position of power and authority where he had conquered death and hell. Amen? Hallelujah. Conquered. And we can even say he conquered the grave. He did all of that for us. Amen? Because we're left here on this earth. And some of us are going to go by the way of death. Hallelujah. But because he rose, if that spirit be in you that raised Christ from the dead, he shall also quicken your mortal body. That's why we should not fear death. Hallelujah. That's why we should not uh, uh, live in, in a state of constant fear of death. Hallelujah. Because death has no power over the child of God. God has already blessed us. Hallelujah. It's already a blessing in it. Hallelujah. I want y'all to catch that. It's already got what God has already done for us by way of salvation. It's secure. You, it can't be changed. It can't be altered. When you walk in God's blessings, those blessings belong to you. Those promises belong to you. So you should live your life in, in, in expectation of those blessings. Hallelujah. My God, not in expectation of fear. Hallelujah. Of, of, of doom and gloom. No matter what life brings your way. Uh, you've got a hope. <laughs> hey, come on, Lord, shut. I've got a hope. Hallelujah. Thank you. That lies beyond the grave. Hallelujah. The grave can't hold me. The grave can't hold you. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? Because Jesus rose from the dead. Uh, and when he got up, he told you himself, I got up with all power, uh, all authority. Amen. All power over the devil. All power over sin. Uh, all power over, over any circumstance that would come over your life. He's Lord. Am I right? Uh, how many of you know he's Lord? Absolutely. Hallelujah. Amen. My God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Isn't that a blessing? How many of you know you've got a prepared place? Huh? Huh? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right, now notice. Notice what he said. He said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which, have, which according to his abundant mercy have begotten us again unto a, a lively hope. Our hope is alive. Huh? He lives. Because he lives, we live. Uh, our hope is alive. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, by the resurrection of Jesus from what? Now notice, verse number four, it tells you who's it for? To an inheritance. We have an inheritance that's incorruptible. Huh? My God. Undefined. And, and faded not 
the way and it's reserved in heaven for who? For you, the elect. Amen? Those that have been chosen, those that have been sanctified, those that have been set apart, those that choose to walk in obedience to, to God's way. It's reserved for you. Hallelujah. And if God has reserved it, uh, he won't make no mistakes. Can't nobody take your reservation. Can't nobody take your place. Amen? Hallelujah. Now notice, he says, to an inheritance. Amen? God has an inheritance for us. Why? Because he's our father. Hallelujah. And the father lays up uh, inheritance for his children. And, and we know that God is abundant. We, God, we know God is more than enough. So, so I know that uh, a lot of people are going to be saved. Uh, and, and, but that doesn't take away from the inheritance that God has for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Though, 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 though. I may have a million dollars and have a set of children to give my inheritance to. And, and, and uh, based on that set, that depends on how much they're going to get. Am I right? It's limited. God doesn't act that way. <laughs> With God, it's, it's, it's limitless. Hallelujah. God blesses us. Hallelujah. You're going to have more than enough. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My God. And I can't wait for it. You know, because God knows how to bless us. Amen. I can't wait for it. God knows how to deliver us. Doesn't he? God knows how to provide for us. Amen? And I know with him, he's going to do something exceeding uh, and abundant. Uh, more than what we can ask for think. Hallelujah. My God. My God. My God. It's, it's, it's incorruptible, meaning that it, 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 it won't, it won't, 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 de uh, we got, uh, Defect on you, it won't tarnish on you, huh? It won't fade away on you, huh? That means it, 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 it won't, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, these buildings that we live in, if you don't keep them up, they're gonna go down. Uh, but God is gonna give to you, won't go down like that. Hallelujah, my God, my God. Hey, huh? Not at all. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Only would, uh, thank you, Jesus. He won't destroy it. Huh? My God. And no way he can get to it. And, and it's reserved where? In heaven. in heaven for who? For you. It's reserved for you. It's in heaven. That's why you got to set your affections on things where? Above. You're a stranger down here. Amen? Uh, what God has for you Huh? Is in your inheritance is in heaven. Uh, yes, he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth, and we're going to dwell here uh, throughout eternity, but, but he's given you an expectation to hope for. Hallelujah, my God. I hope y'all hear me tonight. Notice, now, notice verse number five. Now, this blessing is only contingent Upon those who are kept by what? Uh, through what? Faith. Through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last times. Amen. And that last times deals with an age. Amen. That age, the last time, opened up on the day of Pentecost. Uh, that opened up the church age. Hallelujah. Wherein now. We are being, going to be saved by grace and through faith in Jesus Christ. Now notice, he said that this inheritance, this uncorruptible that's reserved in heaven for you is, 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 is reserved for those who are kept by what? The power of God, the power of God through faith unto deliverance. Amen? Ready to be revealed at the last time. Now, it was revealed to us, like I said, when Peter opened the doors of the church 
and began to preach Christ, amen, and, and to open up the gospel. The gospel is, is God's way or plan of salvation. Now notice, he said that this inheritance are kept by the, uh, who are kept by the power of God. Jesus told his disciples, I want you to go to Jerusalem and do what? Tarry there until you be what? Uh, until you be endued with power. Amen? And the Holy Ghost is that power. Uh, that word power there, it, it, it has two connotations. It, it refers to authority and the ability to act. Hallelujah. It, you, God has given you authority over the devil, over the enemy, over the elements of this world. You have dominion. Hallelujah. You are part of his kingdom. Hallelujah. You can declare and to decree. Hallelujah. You can pray. Hallelujah. And God will hear your prayer and move on your behalf. Uh, you got authority over angels. You got authority over devils. Hallelujah. You got authority. Hallelujah. Over elements uh, of this world. Hallelujah. And, and, and you have power. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost gives you power to move. Power to act. Power to stand. Uh, the ability. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you got something when you got the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. God, 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 God's grace is on you. His power is on you. His anointing is on you. His authority is on you. The blessings of God that has been laid up for you, you can call them down. You can call God into, uh, 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 how can you say, it? reconciliation because of the promises that he has made unto you. You are somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to walk in your authority. Hallelujah. Walk in your anointing. Uh, walk in the way that God has established. Hallelujah. My God. You know, sometimes people say that holiness is too hard. The reason why it's too hard because they won't submit. Uh, they don't want to walk. They want to have their way. Uh, but God resists the proud. Uh, and notice, he given grace to the humble. Uh, those that don't want to submit, but they want to humble themselves, God will give you grace. That's power. Uh, that's a Lord. Hallelujah. So you can walk in his way. Hallelujah. My God. My God. My God. My God. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Now notice. Hey, glory. Notice what he said. He said, who are kept by the power of God through faith. Your faith is essential. The enemy attacks your faith. When Jesus said to uh, Peter, Simon Peter, the devil has desired to sift you as wheat. Uh, he said, but I pray for you that your what? Your faith fail not. Amen. And he said, then when thou art converted, see, you're walking in my faith, it'll convert you. Uh, it'll change you. Yes, he said, then you can strengthen your brother. Uh, hallelujah. And the Bible tells us that the devil shoots at us fiery darts. Uh, but you got to take the shield of faith and do what? Quench all the fiery darts of who? The wicked. Amen. So, so if your faith is so essential, Ought you not to build yourself up uh, on, your most, on your most holy faith? Uh, and he says, uh, faith cometh by what? And that by what? The word of God. When, when, when you hear the word of God and then walk in obedience to God's word, that's how you build your faith up. You can't hear God's word and sit on it and think that you're going to build your faith up. Hey, well, I'm going to sit here. I've read the word. Now I'm going to wait for my faith to be built up. 
Huh? No, it doesn't work like that. Your faith is built when you hear the word and act on it. And move on it. That's how your faith is built up. Deacon Fields? You can be a, a good witness and you know you saw what you saw. But when you get on that witness stand, you got the enemy trying to impeach you. Absolutely. And make you believe you didn't see what you saw. Absolutely. You know, so. Bring doubt. Right. So you have to be sure of what you believe. Thank you. And know that the enemy calls you to stop. Absolutely. 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 Thank you. And we can be sure of it. Amen. This ain't, this ain't something, as Paul said, that was done in a corner. Hallelujah. Thank you. This thing is certified. It's a certified gospel. Uh, it's been tried. Hallelujah. Tried in the fire. Hallelujah. That's why he said, uh, uh, Jesus said in the book of Revelations, chapter uh, number three, he says, he told that Laodicean church, the church age that we're in now, he said, I counsel you to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I counsel you. Hallelujah. This thing is sure. Huh? We're in, God has established it that if you believe it, you won't be ashamed. It's a solid foundation. Uh, he said, behold, I lay in Zion uh, a, a rock, a tried rock or a tried stone, a cornerstone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's tried. It's sure. Amen? Hallelujah. You can, you can, uh, you, well, we don't bet, so I can't say that. <laughs> uh, you can put your confidence in it. Be assured. Amen? Uh, be confident. Be confident in this thing. And you know, uh, Dickie Fields hit on a, a great point. Uh, a reason why uh, the saints of God uh, are stagnant in, in a lot of areas of life is because we're not confident uh, of what God has said. Amen? We, 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 uh, we allow the enemy to attack our mind and put doubt and fear in us that, that hinders our move with God. Uh, you, can't, you can't walk with God uh, and, and allow fear, when I say allow fear, uh, uh, fear to immobilize you, to stop you from acting. Yes, sir. Amen? Amen? What does scripture say? God has not given us what? The spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. But love power. and what? Power. There's that word again, power. Uh, and a sound mind. Amen? Hallelujah. So, 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 what are you saying, Brother Pastor, that, that if you believe this gospel, believe what Peter is saying in these verses, uh, live by it. Walk in that authority. Walk in that power. Increase your wisdom. Increase your knowledge. Ah, Holy Ghost is working with me now. You can't increase wisdom uh, 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 by just reading. Uh, you can you increase wisdom by acting. Wisdom is a skill. Uh, that's what wisdom is. Uh, it's a skill. Uh, and God wants you to uh, increase wisdom by increasing your skill. Amen? You don't become a better driver just because you read the book. You become a better driver after hours of driving. Uh, you become a skilled in the word of God after uh, years of use. Uh, walking with God. Uh, talking with God. Some failures. Amen. God had to pick you up, comfort you. Amen. Put you back uh, on, uh, on the road of right. Uh, doesn't he have to do that? When Peter, my God, when Peter uh, denied Jesus three times, uh, he, he had a pity party. Uh, he, he backed up. Jesus had to go to him to comfort him. Simon Peter, lovest thou me more than these? Uh, put him back on his assignment. Uh, feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and Peter said, yeah, Lord, you know I love you. And kind of shot. Hallelujah. So, 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 but, but he had a failure. 
Amen? Uh, but it wasn't a colossal failure. Why? Because Jesus said, I prayed for you, man, uh, that your faith will not fail. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to realize that our faith is something. Amen? Don't let nobody play around with your faith. Huh? Don't let nobody uh, uh, influence your faith other than the word of God. You got to guard your faith. Amen? You got to build your faith up by exercising and walking with your God. Amen? Be intentional about what you read. Amen? By what you see. Don't give the devil access huh, to, to your mind where he, he can have influence over your faith. Hallelujah. My God. I hope y'all hear me today. Hallelujah. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, Sandala Mosha. Rebuke that devil. Amen. And, and I'm going to say this and move on uh, with the faith thing uh, because it's very important that, that we should wash our minds in the word of God, just uh, uh, take sessions reading God's word that deal with faith. Amen? To be intentional that you can build up your faith. I'm going to be honest with you. One of the reasons why the Old Testament was written so it can build your faith. Uh, it gives you a history about your God and, and about Jesus Christ. Amen? And God wants you to bathe your mind Hallelujah. In that word, that Old Testament, so it can build your faith. Bathe your mind, hallelujah, in that Old Testament, so it can build your faith. Hallelujah. Because it gives you a history of what God has done. Hallelujah. And what God is capable of doing. Hallelujah. My God. My God. Uh huh. That's why he told us he's just saying never change. Never change. That come on, son of a Day yesterday. Hey. Uh, yeah. I never changed what I did way back then. <laughs> I do it again. I do it again. I do it for you in this age. Yeah. You know, but you got to hold on to your faith. Yeah. You know, you have to believe God. Got to believe God. Got to believe God. Hallelujah. Without it, it's impossible to please him. Yes. Huh? He that cometh to God must believe that what? He is. He is, he is according to the scriptures. Yes. You can't believe him. Uh, uh, God is something he's not. Because <laughs> he, he won't be that. Uh, God is who he is. He said, I am that I am. <laughs> Hallelujah. God, come on, shout. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. <laughs> yeah. uh, I was here praying about one, one day, and, and, and that's what the Lord dropped in my mind. What's that? Hold on to your faith. Yeah. What I did back in the Old Testament, yeah. all, all of the, the righteousness that I bestowed upon my prophet, the people that I do, I'm doing that today. <laughs> you just have to believe. Oh, and yeah. I began to pray, and in my prayer, I said, Lord, you're the same. Hey, yeah, come on, shut Because that's what he revealed to me. Yeah. You have to believe God no matter what. God never changes. Never changes. You don't believe. Yeah, absolutely. You believe in there's nothing that God can't do. There's nothing that he won't do. It's yes. His will concerning you. Hallelujah. But it's our job to keep praying. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Why did the children die in the wilderness? Lack of unbelief. Yeah. Lack of faith. Amen. Why did God get upset with them when they asked them for uh, water and, 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 and food? Huh? Because they had unbelief. They were murmuring and complaining. He was ready to give them everything. <laughs> God is ready to give you everything. Hallelujah. Uh, Deacon Fields, Brother Creek. You're uh, growing up, you have a mother and father. There go. And, and when the mother is on the same page that the father, the child grows up with two minds. Well, mom says I can do this, dad says I can't do this. Mm. That's why they should be one. Yeah. And, and, and we grow up spiritually with my, my both. We have a mind that we use. <laughs> Unstable in all his ways. Uh, Miss Quinn. And also when you press your way. Press your way. When you Good press word. through circumstances. Good word. When you press when you press your way through through obstacles or, or, or 
things you know you need to do during the course of the day. Yeah. Your faith is being built up. Yeah. When you plant the word, you huh. plant the word from the inside. Yeah. As you go through that situation. Yeah. And even when you read the word as you go through that situation, your faith is being built. You, and that's, that's that rock. That rock. Strong, 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 that strong sound salvation that you're building your faith on. Yeah. And, and God will move you. He, 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 when he moves you, you, you remind me of those scriptures that you're being read in the word of God. Yeah. My God. I like that word he used. Uh, 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 your faith being built up on the inside. Hallelujah. That's it. Amen. Uh, the God is building us up on the inside. Amen. Uh, uh, and he's building. Uh, never, never. Uh, notice the scripture. The trying of your faith is much more precious than gold that perish. Amen. Uh, uh, that's how precious your faith is. That's how much stock and value we should take in our faith. Amen? Don't count your faith as a light thing. Don't, don't neglect your faith. Build your faith. Add, oh, he hit me, brother. He said, add to your faith. Virtues, knowledge, temperance. Patience, brotherly kindness, charity. He said, if these things be in you, <laughs> we have a Bible study now, and divide and increase, uh, it shall make you neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge uh, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Brother David. Uh, the trying of your faith, as your faith is being tried, that's what it's, it's, it's building up in you. Yeah. The knowledge and the wisdom and that. Oh, sorry. You know, that's when, when, when something is being tried, it's adding more power, more power yeah. is being injected. Into that thing. Yeah. So that's, the way, that's why we have to, our faith is, we don't give up when we're being tried. Right. If you give up, you're going to lose the victory. Yeah. You have to hang in there until God brings you out in other words for your faith to be built up in order to get all of this other added to you. Absolutely. My God, my God, I'm getting deep revelation at this moment uh, about how important our faith is and how important it is for us not to neglect it, but build it up. Yeah. Amen. Let me just say this. Uh, uh, one thing that I'll get you. Amen. That, 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 that our faith is being tried and that trial is going through the fire. Amen. To, to as y'all know, to burn off the dross. Amen. To burn off unbelief. To burn off uh, uh, worldly love and worldly desires that attach themselves to your faith that doesn't do you no good. Amen. It's like, y'all seen a dog uh, uh, that's gotten wet and then that dog in slow motion is shaking himself and that water is flying everywhere. Amen. That's, that's, that's how your faith is. Thank you, Lord. Uh, whatever's attached to you, you got to shake all that off. Hallelujah. So, so all of that can come uh, off of you so you can be pure. Your faith has to be pure. Uh, your faith has to be righteous. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, you need testing trials uh, to, to burn it off. Minister Queen. Especially like the blacksmith uh, with the hammer yeah. hitting, the, hitting that steel. Yeah. He's taking off the impurity. Shaking that steel. That's the trial in your faith. When you're in the kingdom, you're working for the kingdom. God! God. You're being tried. When, you right. work, when, when I come into the house of God and I come in here and clean, I pray. I seek God. Seek I, seek, I, seek, I seek his advice. Seek when I seek God, I get peace. Peace. When I get peace, I get understanding. Yeah. When I get ready to leave, I've been tried. I've been tested. So that's when you're building up your faith in that way also. Thank you, Jesus. I like what he said, too. He said, when I get peace, then I get some understanding. Because when your mind is all jumbled and yeah. your mind is all confused, yeah. amen, you can't really get understanding. Uh, but there is a peace of God, uh, 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 hallelujah, that he'll give you, amen, and then he'll give you un, uh, uh, some, some peace that passes all understanding. Won't he do it? Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, my God, my God. 
That's why we got to get us a quiet place. All right? We got to move on. My God. Hallelujah. It's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> All right, what verse we in? All right, number six. Number five says, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Amen? And this faith was revealed already. <coughs> Man, on the, on the day of Pentecost, when they opened up that door, when the Holy Ghost came down. So it's that. Amen? Peter preached it. <laughs> Uh, all right? Now, also, too, we are living in the last time, the last, the last of the church age. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Jesus. All right? Verse number six. He says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through what? Manifold temptations. Amen? We, we go through a lot, don't we? Thank you, Jesus. And, and that word manifold means various. Amen? Various types of temptation that has different characters. Amen? And I'm using that word intentionally. Different characters. There's, there's certain temptations that, 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 that come to you that are in different forms and they're different types. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Like, uh, there's, when we talk about the word fornication, there's many characters to that word fornication. It's not just one type of fornication. It's not just one type of temptation that, that comes upon you. It takes on various forms. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Sometimes it's heated. Sometimes it's light. Amen? Sometimes it's subtle. Amen? Amen. Sometimes it's recognizable. Yeah. Sometimes you don't realize you was tempted until you uh, uh, have completed the act. You follow? Amen. But you're kept. <laughs> God, God in his foreknowledge, he knew all of that. Amen. And, and, and John picked that thing up. And he said, talked about uh, 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 if, if you confess, amen, he's faithful and just to forgive you uh, of all your sin. But, but when you go through your test, you ought to learn something from them right. so that you don't repeat its history. Amen. Amen. Shame on me if I, if I make myself a, a, another transgressor going back to the things that God has delivered me from. Shame on you. Amen. Can't say shame on the devil. <laughs> Dig your field. Uh, but I can't let that get me down. 
You can't let that get you down. You got to be positive in your mind about your hope. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes. Mother Davis. And, and would it be uh, all right to say too? You have to have a, a reverence or a fear for God. Yeah. You know, in order because you mentioned earlier, you know, <laughs> continually being a transgressor, continually making mistakes, making the same mistakes, doing the same thing, and making the same mistakes. Right. The reason, the reason, the way I see that, a person that does that have no fear. They don't reverence God. Right. Like they should. I remember when I was you young. Tell them the truth. I kept doing something, and and I kept and, and I'm, I'm like, you want to help me to not give me the victory over this? I never got what it was, but and then I came to myself. I said, you know what? I I have to remind myself. And then I, I thought I can't remind myself that you God to help me. Yeah. And then I, I began to pray on that rise. I said, Lord, help me to love you enough to not keep making that same mistake. Mm. So I uh, I came to the conclusion, if you really love the Lord, if you reverence him, you have a fear of his judgment, then you're going to straighten up. Go straight up. That's the beginning of wisdom. It's the yeah. beginning of knowledge. Yeah, you're going to keep making that same mistake. Absolutely. Absolutely. My God. My God. Also, Bishop, we do things to maintain our joy. Yeah. We our joy a lot. By when, we, by when, when, when I know I need to come to service. Hey. When I come to service and I'm happy and I'm struggling, it's just to get here sometimes. Right. And the devil wants me to sit back. Oh, and I'm right. not going to sit back. It's a pressing way. That's the time to praise him. Yeah. And that's, that's when you come to service, when you come to church, when you do things in the kingdom, your joy, your joy, your, even your joy is being renewed. Yeah. You get a peace, some satisfaction. Yeah. I like it. I like it. When you come in and you feel all spent, and it was like all that you could do to get here, uh, amidst uh, testing trials, amidst fighting uh, in your mind, and when you when you get here, uh, you don't you don't you don't feel uh, like you should be here, like you don't like want to be here, amen. And you get up and praise him. And give him thanks. I liken that to the woman that just had one penny and put her penny into the offering. Yes. Amen. She gave all she that she had. Yes. <laughs> and God turned around and looked at her and, and called her blessed. Amen. When you when you don't feel it, amen. And and it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, you press your way. Uh, against all laws, but then you get up and clap your hands and give God thanks. Oh my God, that, that moves God. <laughs> That's like giving all that you have. Uh, you you in a better position than that person that got up uh, with a mind stayed on him, uh, saying, "I'm coming to church to give you glory." <laughs> Give them glory. Yeah. Give them praise. Yeah. Uh, bless the Lord at all times. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. It ain't about a feeling. Yeah. It's about who you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's about what you trust in. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. About doing where your help comes from. Yeah. That's my most yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. My God. Lord, help us. Help us. We have to keep our joy up. Yes. Amen. Glory. And what I mean by that is, you know life happens. This ain't your first years in life. And you see life happening to other people. Amen. You know death is prevalent. Amen. You know things happen to good people. Am I right? Yeah. You know God is a helper. Yeah. Help. <laughs> you know God's word is true. Yeah. Amen. So, so, so when the affliction hits you, Woo. you know you won't feel it. Yes. But you got to make a mental uh, uh, evaluation and a mental decision. Yeah. Amen. That 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 I'm I'm not going to allow this to bring me into a deep depression. Yeah. 
Amen. Amen. I'm going to bless the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going I'm to read my scripture. Hallelujah. I'm going to think positive yeah. uh, where that negative thought is trying yeah. to yeah. overcome yeah. you. Uh, like, like Philippians 4 and 8. Whatsoever things. Amen. Yeah. Think on these things. Yeah. Amen. That has to be intentional. Y'all with me? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Even I, I thought about I thought about Lazarus uh, in the last couple of days. That that Lazarus died. Jesus came and rose from the dead. Did he? And then Lazarus died again. Follow? Me? The Lord, we go through our sicknesses. And the Lord can deliver us. Yes. Am I right? But if we keep on living, we're going to die of something. Yes. Does that take away from his power? Does that take away from the glory and his ability to deliver? Should, should I turn my back on him? Huh? Never. That's just something that's going to happen. Amen. The Lord blesses you out of situations. The Lord delivers you. But you're in a situation now where you think you should be delivered and he hasn't. Yes, Lord. Should you let that take away from his ability? Should that take away from his power? Should that cause you to, to backslide? <laughs> no! His grace, I like it. His grace is sufficient. His strength is made perfect in weakness. Yeah. Uh, Paul said, therefore, will I most glory uh, 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 in the Lord. Yeah. Amen. We ought to think about these things before they come to us. Amen. Amen. Sober. That's what it means by when the scripture says, think sober. Amen. Think of it. Everything ain't comedy capers. Y'all know about that. Everything ain't uh, uh, cartoons. <laughs> Follow? Gotta think soberly. Yes. Think soberly. Amen? All right, we gotta go. Thank you, Jesus. All right, now notice what he says. He says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a what? Season. So that tells you that your test and trials is only for a season. Amen? Yes, Lord. The eerie churches are in uh, a season of death. People are dying all around us. Mm -hmm. That's a season. Yes. It's going to change. Seasons change. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? If you're in a hardship, that season is going to change. You gotta survive the season. Amen? Amen. I was looking out the window the other day. I was looking at the trees. You know what scripture came to me? Jesus said, You discern the, the times, you discern the season by, by, by changing up the weather, so to speak. I'm paraphrasing. You know. Aren't we not to discern the time and the seasons of his coming? He's coming. Amen? Yes. God, I wouldn't be surprised if he came after his Bible study. I wouldn't be surprised if he came during the Bible. Well, he wants me to finish teaching. <laughs> but I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. All things are ready. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. So we say, he says, What verse we in? Verse 7. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptation. Notice, he said heaviness. Told you to rejoice in the beginning of that verse, and he realizes that you're in heaviness. So you got to use your power. 
You got to use your anointing. Amen? To rejoice. All you that what? And our heavy lady. He said, I'll give you that. Amen? Amen. And see, now you bring up another. See, then you you on fire tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, uh, we ought to prepare our minds and our hearts uh, to come unto him. Amen. Amen? In other words, when trouble hit, I should be Wondering where I should go, what I should do. I should already have a sustained relationship with him. I watch people go through hard times. I watch the saints go through hard times. And I watch, uh, y'all forgive me for this word, the ants go through hard times. And the saints, they endure. They go through. The ants lose their mind. They throw in the towel. They walk away after they have tasted. Because they didn't have a sustained relationship. It was fox fire. It was faith. It was the outward appearance. What revealed it? The fire. That was from God. All right. Where we at? Verse 7. The trial of your faith, notice, uh, being much more precious. Then what? Gold perishes, and it's a precious metal. Amen? But your faith is more precious than gold. That gold you got around your neck and on your finger, your faith is worth more than that. Notice that. Though it be tried with what? Fire. Those are testing. Try it. Multitude of them. Might be found under praise, glory, and honor at the appearing of who? Uh, he's going to come. He's going to show up. And with gold getting it purified, there's, there's different types of gold. You follow? You got one carat. 14 carat, follow me. Uh, you got different, you got different alloys in the gold. So it's going to take different techniques to get the impurity out of it. That's what he meant by manifold temptation. We go through different testing trials that are specifically designed to get certain things out of us. If you greedy, he going to tempt you and test you with money. Amen? If you got a whoremongering spirit, you're going to be tested and tried with that which you love. Men or women or gold. <laughs> you don't know what we in now. <laughs> can't, can't rule that out. <laughs> you're going to be tested. Depending on your proclivity. You follow? Whatever it is. If you don't like to give, uh, you're going to be tested. Now, if you got a, a, a collage of all those things, you're going to be tested in all those things. Amen? Is God unrighteous? He's righteous, isn't he? Hallelujah. He's trying to bring you out. <laughs> Pure as gold. That's why we should rejoice. Yes. Uh, and not only that, 
But learn something in your text. Amen? Learn something about God and learn something about yourself. Learn something about the other person. That's tempting. Deacon Field, where you gotta go? Yeah, uh, I tried to stop smoking, you know, using pipes and all different types of things and stuff like that, but nothing worked until I got baptized. In Come on. Name. You know, when we try to work things out in our own strength. Yes. <laughs> it might work for a little while. Yeah. But you know it's gonna come back. But yeah. we need to let God help us. Just like that man that was in the grave. You know, no one they I think they banned him to the grave. God was so crazy. But, yeah. But Jesus came in there and helped us. Absolutely. And he, he asked, him, Lord help me. My Lord. We have to ask for help if you need help. That's right. That's right. That's man, you talk. Thank you, Jesus. I was successful stopping smoking three times. <laughs> Until I came to Jesus. Then I got fully delivered. Amen. Amen. He'll do it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right. We'll pick up next week on this, on this verse that we're at. Amen. I hope y'all got something out the Bible study. We certainly thank God for your grace and your mercy and everything that you've done for us. And we want you to continue to pray for us that the Lord's will be done in our life. In Jesus' name, amen.